Back when I was a Vim noob, I'd have my LSP throwing errors, and I didn't really know how to deal with that. I'd just, like, be able to see half of them because they would not wrap, and I'd be like, well, shit, gotta just uh, copy what I can see and paste it into Google. And that was just terrible. Uh, but luckily, I became more based since then, and I actually read the manual and the documentation, and I know how to just wrangle that uh, LSP error is like nobody's business. The workflow went from, like, just terrible to, like, creamier than a medieval dairy. And I'll show you how you can do the same if you're in a similar spot to where I was. So, pulling up Vim, I'm going to find a file with a lot of errors in it, for example, which should be pretty easy knowing me. I'm actually going to just open up my LSP config, because that'll have errors in it for sure, or at least warnings. Yeah, you can see right there on line 19, 18, 13, fuck, relative line numbers, um, 141. Yeah, so unused, unused local. You can actually see all the maps down here, and I'll go through them. So the first one is just capital K. That's actually, that might just be inbuilt. I don't know why I have that mapped, but that just shows you information about whatever you're hovering over. The next one is, um, actually, we'll do them a little out of order. Um, the next one is leader LK, which will show the error for the current line. So if it was like super long, and if I did something like egregiously wrong, I put that right, right there. Um, oops, that's that opens up a terminal, wrong command. Um, leader LK, that would show me like the full thing that's going off. So that's pretty nice. And then I actually have a couple of commands to jump to errors, space LN and space LP. And the reason for the L is actually just because it's like language. That's how I remember it in my head. So leader LP will take me there. And if I do that again, it'll take me to the next and the next. Oops. And then, yeah, leader LN, leader LN, leader LN. And sweet. We're back. We're not yet back. Still not yet back. I'm just going all the way to the bottom. I can use those to jump around. Those are pretty nice if you want to, like, spot fix errors. I also have leader LA which is suggested fixes. They're kind of terrible most of the time. Sometimes, depending on what LSP client you're using, they'll be a little better. But no, most of the time they suck. But the best one by far is language formatters. You have to install these for basically everything because one of the biggest noob mistakes you can possibly make is trying to fix formatting by yourself. Like, say you have some weird formatting stuff, like this is hella indented or you've got like spaces here or this is like all the way back. I have leader LF for language format. Let's indent this even more. And that will just fix everything. So LF, boom, all fixed. And you can get formatters for basically every file. The way you install them, at least I do, is with this plugin called Mason. And then you can filter for formatters. Um, let's see, how do you filter? Control F. Nope, that's not it. What I do is just search formatter. Oh no, I'm really stupid. You can just hit five and it'll go to the formatter page. Ignore that. Um, yeah, you can search through all of them. Some of them are depreciated, but basically everything major you need, you can get. And sometimes languages will just have formatters built in for them. It's a little confusing. There's like language, language server protocol have formatters themselves but then sometimes a language will demand like an extra formatter plugin so it is a little bit of a nightmare and it's kind of a headache to get set up but it's so worth it once you do leader l r lets you rename things so this is kind of nice if you have like a variable like for instance if i create a types variable just to plug the language a little bit more um let's say this is equal to the integral from zero to ten I have to type the whole integral, yeah. And then we have like some multi line math. Put this in there and that in there. Actually, just put this in there twice. I don't, I'm, I don't know what I'm even doing. But then I can space LR for language rename um, and type that. Boom. I don't do this a lot because substitution I find is just better. By the way, this is what that would look like. Um, so, like, instead, I'll just type s slash this slash that, and that's just a little quicker. But for certain specific workflows where, like, the variables in weird places are mixed with other things of the same name and you don't really want to run a substitution, that's pretty good. GD is also a very good remap 
what this allows you to do is go to the definition of something and then you can use control o to jump out of it something i do all the time um, so let me show you an actual example of this if i go to c plus plus file right here and i have this class and i want to go to the where the class is defined i can do gd um, on the class and then boom it takes me to the class definition and then control o to jump back out of it and that's my own code but sometimes you want to jump into like dependencies so for instance right here let's say open up like this rust file terrible file to open but here um, and there's this i'm deriving this parser and debug traits and what if i want to see what the parser looks like under the hood i can actually go gd and then i can just start reading the type definition of parser which is so incredibly useful because you can figure out exactly what it's doing and what to pass to it and then you want to get back out of it you can also control o and you're back there and then another trick is you can open up your file explorer from here and then you can see what the library looks like on the inside um, and you can see exactly where it is in the dependencies which is awesome um, so yeah those are the uh, lsp commands that will take you from pretty god awful to one of the best Maybe not one of the best, but a little better. Yeah, thanks for watching.